Gwyn Shotwell was among the first dozen employees hired in 2002 by tiny startup Space Exploration Technologies Corp. Now, as president of the industry-leading Rocket Maker, she serves as the essential counterpoint and buffer for its mercurial chairman, Elon Musk. Make sure you watch until the end of the video, because today we're about to take a look at Elon Musk's secret weapon and right hand at SpaceX, Gwyn Shotwell. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Future File, to watch more fascinating videos on futuristic tech. While Elon Musk is constantly in the media spotlight, the success of his space company SpaceX is not solely his work. Gwyn Shotwell, the company's president and chief operating officer, is in charge behind the scenes. She is the person who transformed a tiny, future-orientated startup into today's global market leader. While Musk is renowned for his hair-triggered temper, Shotwell is well known for being unflappable among clients and employees. Musk is susceptible to mood swings, especially when confronted with technological issues. This was in evidence recently when he retaliated against a diver who assisted in the evacuation of a Thai soccer team stranded in a cave. Musk called the diver a pedo after he mocked a mini-submarine Musk built and sent to the rescue site. To clear any misunderstandings, Musk apologized soon after. Shotwell takes care of things on SpaceX and helps Musk control his irrational behavior. When Musk enrages strangers with a rash tweet or comment, Shotwell is there to calm them down and reassure them that everything is under control. Musk is the slightly crazy genius leader who is constantly coming up with fresh, innovative ideas, and Shotwell is the steady engineer and researcher who turns his visions into reality. As per Matthew Desch, the CEO of Iridium Communications Inc., SpaceX's largest commercial customer, Gwyn is the steady hand. She's got the technical savvy, and that underpins her being a great salesperson. But she never tries to oversell, and she's always open and honest. Desch started negotiations with SpaceX in early 2010 as part of a proposal to launch 75 satellites into orbit on Falcon 9 rockets. The satellites would replace Iridium's current fleet, allowing the company to manage internet communications, which would be partially funded by a $1.8 billion loan. While investors were attracted to the Falcon 9's low price, they were wary that the rocket had never flown before. Therefore, Shotwell traveled to Paris in June 2010, just days after Falcon 9's demo launch, to persuade investors. Her presentation included a video of the successful flight. According to Desch, Gwyn had literally enchanted them. The deal was closed soon after signing a $492 million contract with SpaceX to launch the entire constellation of dozens of satellites. Born on November 23, 1963, Gwyn Shotwell grew up as the middle of three daughters in Libertyville, a suburb of Chicago. Shotwell is said to have had an interest in machines since her childhood. For instance, in grade school, Shotwell helped her dad, a neurosurgeon, build the fence around the family's suburban garden and made a basketball backboard out of plywood. In addition, she is said to have had good grades in mathematics and science as a student. Nevertheless, as a teenager, Shotwell could never have imagined herself working as an engineer. But when her mother took her to a Society of Women Engineers gathering, she changed her mind. There, Shotwell encountered a speaker who encouraged her to pursue a career as a mechanical engineer. Gwyn Shotwell was influenced by both her appearance and her speech. It was at that point that she realized it's okay to be a woman and an engineer. Shotwell joined Chrysler Corporation as a trainee after earning a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and a master's degree in applied mathematics. However, Shotwell quit the company after just about a year and a half because she did not like the working environment. Shotwell liked the starting salary at Chrysler but opposed the conservative society. On the first day of her rotation at Chrysler's mechanic training school, an instructor picked her out for wearing a skimpy dress, then made her stand in front of the class as he berated her. Shotwell then moved to Los Angeles and worked for a decade at Aerospace Corporation, a large defense contractor, before spending a few years at Microcosm, a private space startup that designs and develops low-cost rockets and rocket components. There, she held the position of Director of Space Systems and met the German Hans Koenigsmann, who later switched to work at SpaceX. 
Shotwell served on the executive committee of Microcosm and was in charge of business development. And this is where she learned some of the most valuable lessons that would help her later at SpaceX. She learned how to direct a team of people, but even more importantly, she learned how to market aerospace products to the government and large corporations. In 2002, Hans Koenigsmann introduced Shotwell to Musk. Around this time, Elon Musk was in the early stages of developing a revolutionary company that would eventually be known as Space Exploration Technologies. In order to raise funds for his new startup, he urgently needed a business development talent who knew what they were doing as an engineer. What better pick than Gwyn Shotwell? Shotwell, who had just divorced her first husband and had two small children, knew she was taking a huge risk. But she was captivated by Musk's audacity. What piqued her interest in SpaceX was Musk's proposal to offer launch services to private satellite providers at very low rates from the start. Musk wished to use proven launch technologies when manufacturing them as cheaply as possible, ultimately reusing rockets to save even more money. Shotwell joined SpaceX as the company's 11th employee, taking on the position of head of business development. According to Musk, when Shotwell joined SpaceX, almost no one knew how to build a rocket at all. At the time, Musk proclaimed himself chief engineer because no one else wanted to join the startup. The encounter with Shotwell was, without a doubt, a stroke of luck and a true blessing for the young space company. Shotwell, who was now in charge of business development, proved to be the right person to turn Musk's lofty ambitions into reality. In addition to her technical skills, she also demonstrated her impressive business talent. When Musk founded the company, most other aerospace companies made money from so-called cost-plus government contracts, which meant the government would issue a specification which the manufacturer would fulfill with the aid of armies of subcontractors and manufacturers and then they would add a fixed percentage charge on top of the actual cost. Now, Musk was totally uninterested in this kind of business. Instead, Musk focused on developing standard products and selling them at the lowest possible price. As a result, Shotwell's work became critical. She had to market a rocket to satellite companies, even though the rocket had never launched. In addition, she also had to convince NASA and the military to finance SpaceX's demonstration flights. Despite the challenges, Shotwell was able to excel by using her straight talk, wit, and confidence. The Defense Advanced Development Projects Agency paid for the company's three first missions, while a Malaysian state-owned satellite starter paid for the four. Besides this, Shotwell was able to convince NASA to grant SpaceX a $400 million contract in 2006 to build the Falcon 9, a bigger rocket capable of carrying cargo and people to the International Space Station. NASA is the last and most significant early sponsor of SpaceX. Falcon 1 had a rocky start with its first three launches. Every launch, though, saw success, and Shotwell proceeded to reassure her new clients that SpaceX was on the verge of becoming a reality. Musk was devastated, but she portrayed the launch as a victory in conversations with customers. Shotwell's assurances were miraculously effective. SpaceX was not dumped by Malaysians, and in September 2008, Falcon 1 became the first spacecraft to enter orbit. Satisfied with the company's progress, three months later, NASA awarded SpaceX a $1.6 billion contract to build a capsule that would dock with the International Space Station. Koenigsman, SpaceX's vice president for Mission Assurance and a longtime friend of Shotwell, stated in an interview, That astonished people. She was selling stuff to NASA at a time when we had a little rocket on an island. That takes bravery and vision. About the same time SpaceX secured the NASA contract, Musk promoted Shotwell to the president and chief operating officer. According to Musk, Gwyn is a wonderful person and an outstanding leader. We would not be where we are today without her. Under Shotwell's leadership, SpaceX developed at a rapid pace, eventually becoming the world's largest satellite carrier. SpaceX is both a major provider to the International Space Station ISS, and the only private corporation capable of safely returning spacecraft from near-Earth orbit. Over the years, Shotwell has earned a reputation as the person who can translate Musk's visions into reality. According to Koenigsman, Shotwell is the bridge between Elon and the staff. Elon says, let's go to Mars, and she says, 
Okay, what do we need to get to Mars? In an industry with few female role models, Gwyn Shotwell stands out like the star that she is. As of 2020, Gwyn Shotwell is listed as the 49th most powerful woman in the world by Forbes. She has also been named on Time magazine's list of the 100 most influential people in 2020. If you liked watching this video, you may also watch the video on how SpaceX builds rockets so fast, shown in the end screen. See you there!